I find with older women with gray hair and real faces, they don't have to be completely as they were, um, to be incredibly compelling figures. And, uh, and, and because also it, it, it exudes confidence and self-confidence. Mm. And that's very attractive. Hey, everyone. Hi, I'm Angela from Silver Linings. I promised you that I would come on a video to show you my haircut. And so I just came fresh from the salon. It's been raining, so, you know, it's not as poofy as it was when I left the salon. But I am very, very happy with my fresh haircut. I had not had my hair styled in over three years. When she told me the last time I had been there was six months before COVID, I just couldn't even believe it. Unbelievable. And that was because I didn't really have to go except for every four to six months and then COVID hit. And I actually got very sick before COVID. So that eliminated me going to the salon. In any case, I mentioned that I would be here to show you the befores and afters. I'm going to show you, I'm going to insert a slide that shows four different pictures. My before and after picture of, of my natural hair uh, before I got it cut and then today. And then I'm going to show you a picture of one of my favorite toppers and another picture of one of my favorite wigs. And so I'm just having a wonderful birthday. The weather isn't pretty and, and beautiful today, but I have the sun in my heart. S-O-N. I have the sun in my heart. And any time we wake up, and we're above ground, it's a good day. And so um, I did want to say thank you. Thank you so much to all of my subscribers. A wonderful birthday gift that I received that I wasn't really expecting was I hit 4,000 subscribers. And I don't wake up every day and say, oh, I have to get more subscribers. It's just sort of a thing that happens as you grow on YouTube. But I wouldn't have gotten there without so many of you without all of you and so I want to say thank you so much and it's nice to still be here so before I continue I just want to show you a couple of the gifts that I received today I haven't and opened it up yet I know it's from my sister but there wasn't a card with it because the card was with another gift that was some hand cream that I love from Cuccio it's one of my uh, favorites um, I'll put a I'll put an insert when I edit, but I was visiting my sister about a month ago, and she had this little guy in her backyard, and it's a rain gauge, and I had never seen one of these, and uh, probably would never buy it for myself, but I'm pretty sure she remembered that I was ooing and eyeing over that rain gauge, and you know, I didn't even think about going online and finding it for myself. I'm I'm pretty sure she probably got it from uh, from Amazon. So I'm going to open up this package and I'm going to show it. I haven't opened it yet. I'm going to open it right with you. So when you open the package, it comes like this, a little styrofoam thing. I always like to see how things come in case I want to give a gift to somebody. And then nestled inside is that cute little turtle. Isn't that sweet? Now, don't drop it, Angela. And then you put the rain gauge in there. And look at that. Of course, now we're going into to the winter months, but when spring comes, and couldn't we have used it a few days ago when it was raining like cats and dogs? I just think that is so cute. Thank you so much, Mary. I, I didn't even have to check the package. I know that this came from you, but it came separately from the other creams that you sent me. I love it. Mwah! It's going right outside after I do my video. So birthdays are fun, aren't they? They're just, well, some birthdays are better than others, let's face it. Um, but this is second to the big one. The big one is next year. Next year I'm turning 70. Unbelievable. And then our kids... Two of our kids gave me this. They went in on this gift. And these, I don't know if you've seen these yet. These are called, I'm not I'm not sure if I'm going to say it right, but it's Ufos. Ufos. And I do not like to wear shoes, even in the wintertime, unless it's really, really freezing. Now, I will wear, I will wear shoes outside, of course. 
Um, but all winter long, I'm wearing oh, this dangerous looking thing, but all winter long, I am wearing flip flops in my house. And we know, and Mary, if you're watching this, you'll be glad to hear this. We know that flip flops are not very uh, supportive, let's just say. But look at these. And they, they, I'm sure they come in a whole bunch of swell different patterns. These are size 7. Good, that'll fit me. Don't they look comfy? And, and they bend, which I love. So I am going to be wearing these. I am sure I'm not even going to wait for the summer. I'm going to... I'm going to wear these now. <laughs> Thank you, Serena and Brienne. I'm not going to do a whole bunch of presents because I didn't get tons of stuff, but anytime I get anything, I'm just like, wow. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And then um, I got myself a couple of presents. I have been wanting some headbands and Amazon had a great deal on these. I think they were like $9.99. I'll put the link below. But there's all kinds of different patterns. And you know, Christmas is coming up. So these are some these are some really good ideas for gifts. Look at all these different patterns. Isn't that great? I love that. <gasps> So, and I actually wanted something like this because at night when I wash my hair, I want to get my hair off my face. And I do have a terry cloth one, but it's just too big and I'm always fighting with it. So I had read a few re reviews about these and just decided they were so inexpensive that that was going to be a birthday gift that I would give myself. And then when I went to the salon, she used this Moroccan oil and it is the... Str extra strong so when she sprayed this on I couldn't believe how yummy it smelled and it doesn't make your hair stiff or anything but I mean I've been out in the rain not pouring rain but you know how your hair will get kind of limp and and you might think well it looks pretty limp but it, I've got more body than I usually do so I bought this for myself and then they have another little travel size here which is wonderful for our purse. Now, I was going to get it in my Amazon store, and one of the things that she mentioned to me, and I'm going to mention this to you in case you're going into my Amazon store or anybody else's Amazon store, um, make sure you get it from a qualified seller. It won't be in my Amazon store if it's not a qualified seller, because you know how we hear these horror stories. People order things, and they're not even the real deal. If it's in my store, it's the real deal. And then I stopped over at Supercuts and I got my beloved shampoo. You cannot get this in any store, at least not that I know of. You have to go in a Supercuts and ask for this. And I only got the shampoo because I already have enough of the conditioner. And it was $15.99 because it was my birthday, she gave me a dollar off. Hey, the dollars add up. And this is the shampoo that I've talked about in other videos that, oh, this is interesting. You unscrew it. And now watch, some purple. Look at that. The shampoo is going to come right out. I like that dispensing system. That is very nice. And then you screw it back. And then you put it face down in your shower. And now I have stuff on my hands. And where am I going to put it? <laughs> I don't have any cleaners here. <gasps> oh. I always say to my husband, it's hard to be me. Okay. And then I wanted to show you what my dear husband gave to me. I haven't read his card yet because I'm going to read that in his presence. But this is from a local shop. It comes in a beautiful box. You could see the swan there. Isn't that gorgeous? This is one of my favorite colors too, yellow. And then of course you open it up. And then there's foam inside there. And then it comes like this. And of course it's a bracelet. So let me show you. My husband has really great taste, and he always buys me something beautiful. 
Look at that. It's kind, of, it's kind of like a tennis bracelet, only a little bit bigger. This is another tennis bracelet he got me. I like bling on my arm. I just, I just do. And I'm going to have to ask him to help me with this class because I have no idea how that class works. But isn't that beautiful? Look at that. So those are just a few of my gifts. I think that's all I wanted to show you for now. And I'm just having a wonderful birthday. And in about another hour, well, no, half hour, we're going to go out to eat. I just wanted to go on here and say thank you to all my subscribers and to show you some of my birthday gifts. And um, anyway, so I came across uh, Megan Kelly had a spot with a guest. It's a man that I've never heard of. And please know that this is not in any way um, me trying to push somebody on you. But th she is someone that that I admire because she really truly is, well, she's not, um, she's quite open-minded. She's not partisan. She'll listen to both sides. And she is about 14 years younger than I am and she's a successful woman if you've never heard of Megan Kelly I'm pretty confident most of you have have heard of her but here's a, just a little snippet of what she um, talked about with her guest his name is Andrew Sullivan who is the editor of the weekly dish substack now the context of their discussion and I'll leave a link below in case you'd like to hear the whole thing they were talking about a lot of famous people, including uh, Queen Elizabeth II, who recently passed, and other people who are famous, Madonna, Meghan Markle. And this, the topic was, um, part of the topic was growing old gracefully. And so I'm going to pick it up from there and let you have a listen. It would be lovely, wouldn't it, if more of our public figures accepted they get old and uglier? It's okay. It's good. We're all going to get there. We need we need role models of aging as opposed to these role models of panicking. And oh, that's good. Yeah. Yes, and and I and I like what he said. We need role models of aging, and not just at on the exterior, but what's on the inside. And he spent a, a good amount of time talking about Queen Elizabeth and who she was on the inside. And okay, sure, she had hairdressers, and I'm sure she had someone help her with her clothing and her makeup and all that. But she had the courage uh, to be who she was. She had the poise and the gravitas of an older woman. Let's continue on. Another thing that strikes me is also that these people are not happy. If you're constantly changing your face, something inside is not at rest. And how many people have we seen that have gone out and, and had these extreme makeovers? I mean, you know, they end up looking deformed. And they're, they're just a shadow of their formal self. And I mean, this really was a very interesting uh, podcast to watch. Um, and so I feel pity to some. I feel pity for Madonna. I mean, in some ways, because she seems trapped. Let I me show the video the so the audience happy. knows what we're talking about. You can watch it on YouTube if you're listening right now on Sirius XM. I'm going to show it now. This is Madonna in this bizarre this? video, and I don't think there's sound. It's her with a cat looking bizarre. She looks, people think she looks like Marilyn Manson in this video. She's, the, the captions read something to the effect of, if I'm, if I'm gay, if I miss, I'm gay. And she has this big pair of hot pink panties that she tries to hit into a trash can and she misses by a mile. So people are wondering if she's coming out. Here's the video. She's got the panties, throwing it. She's, she's put on some weight. So she looks very different. We've never seen Madonna anything other than ripped and athletic. Bright pink wig. And the her eyebrows are gone. She does look a little like Marilyn Manson. You know, to, to your point, Andrew, you can make yourself look a little younger. You know, And this is the part that I really, really like. Listen. You know, like, I've talked openly. I, I get Botox. And I don't get Botox. Well, I did get Botox once, but for a very different reason. 
I and I won't get into that here. Maybe someday, maybe someday long in the in the in the future, I'll tell you about that. I like the Botox. I mean, I still get a li- I get a little, so I can still do this with my eyebrows, you know. But like, if I didn't get it, I'd have a lot more lines in my forehead than I do. I think where people go wrong is trying to look young. You can look a little younger. You know, you could shave off, I think, between five and seven years with, like, taking good care of your skin, staying out of the sun, getting the Botox. But you cannot take off 27 years or you start to look like a freak. Right. Well, what I'm concerned about is that people who get a face at age 30 and it's the same face when they're 80. Um, you know, right? there was a, That's weird. There was, a, there was a, <laughs> a great line by George Orwell that said, by the age of 40, everyone has the face they deserve. And, and because life has, has brought its painful path on your face. And that's what it means to be human. Uh, we're, we're in a flight from mortality. We're in a flight from pain. We're in a flight from all the discomfort that actually makes you strong. Um, and again, for me, the main thing is pity. Uh, fame, is, fame is the most overrated thing in our civilization. My dream was to be famous, and how that happened, for me, I wanted to be a famous singer, I wanted to be on Broadway, or maybe be a concert pianist, but be something great, be something famous. I'm not really sure sure what the root of that was, other than just the fact that, yes, God did give me a gift to sing, but I truly believe in my heart that we truly are not built for fame, and for some reason in my life now, I keep hearing this recurring theme um, reminding me that that is really the truth and in our in our hearts um maybe we dream of being famous but most people can't handle it and so now i feel like that god saved me from being famous i can still sing i get to sing all the time but i don't have to tour i don't have to go on the road i don't have to sell my soul i don't have to be somebody i'm not just to be able to do something that i truly love to do it is so massively overrated. It brings Amen. generally misery, isolation. And, and, and look, I, I have a mini, mini, mini insight into this because I'm, I'm, I, I used to be on TV a lot. I took myself off because I don't want to be in a place where suddenly everyone sees you in which you can't walk into, into a room and just be part of the background and observe things. Once you become too famous or too well-known, every place you go into is altered. So you never see reality. So you get constantly shut off from reality. You get constantly shut off from the human interactions you need. You get shut off from criticism. And you get shut off from the past. And you, you can develop as, as, as Madonna has or as many other people have. And isn't that something? Because again, when we're younger, we tend to look at people who are famous and think, oh, they're living the good life. And then as you get older and you look back at people's lives, uh, you see that, no, no, it, it, not, that's, that's not really true. They paid a big price and maybe are still paying a big price for fame because we are not built for fame. Um, into masks that are hiding misery, really. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, I hope she's okay. And she's done some wonderful stuff. And it's okay to retire and just go yeah. away and live your life. It's fine. Or, it's or just, you know, start to look like an older version of yourself, of the self that was so hugely popular and beloved and keep singing and just do the, the old, do the Tina Turner, you know, do the Tina Turner aging version. There, there's a lane for that. When I was in my twenties, I had two big musical uh, passions. One was Madonna and the other were the Pet Shop Boys. Um, ah. they off. Now Pet Shop Boys just did a concert in the Hollywood Bowl just last, just last night. Um, they are doing, Concert after concert, they're putting out new albums all the time. They look as if they're in their 60s because they are in their 60s. Mm-hmm. But they are having a blast and they're actually creating things and they're putting out new material that's actually as good as anything they've ever done. That's And I'm in my 60s and I'm having a blast and I'm creating things and I'm loving, loving, loving what I'm doing right now. Do I make as much money as I used to? No, a fraction of what I I used to do. But 
I'm loving what I'm doing. They are my role models. The, the, they... Can I ask you something as a guy from as a guy from the UK originally? One thing I notice when I I love this next part. Listen up. I go on GB News, which I love. Is you're allowed to be a woman who is aging on television in the UK. It's okay. You're not kicked out. Here in America, different standard. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, but there just is. And I don't know exactly why that is. Why are the British so normal? <laughs> and I hate to use this weird term, but like forgiving of, a, of an aging woman versus here in America where there's so much pressure put on, I mean, people like Madonna that she feels the need to make herself into Marilyn Manson and continue being this weird exhibitionist mm -hmm. now well into her 60s where she should be like nailed life. Look at me now. Here come my, my lines. Boom. Yeah, I, 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 I'm agreeing with you as well on this, Megan. I, I, I don't know. I find the examples of women who have not done this, if you look at someone like Christine Lagarde, or if you look at someone like Margaret Thatcher, or if you look at people who, who grew older and didn't do this, Angela Merkel, there's a certain poise and gravitas for an older woman in power that I find very compelling. Um, maybe it's because the British have always had uh, women leaders, whether it be the first Elizabeth or Victoria or Elizabeth II or Thatcher, um, in ways that they've got aged and they've become icons. And so you don't need them to be young. Maybe I, I'm, that's, I'm just uh, thinking out loud there. But um, mm -hmm. I find with older women with gray hair and real faces, they don't have to be completely as they were. Um, to be incredibly compelling figures, and uh, and and because also it 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 exudes confidence and self confidence, mm. and that's very attractive. Whereas this other stuff just seems to put forward insecurity, which is not attractive. So isn't that encouraging? That's coming from a gentleman who is older. He's looking back. He's telling us what an older man thinks, uh, a man who obviously is accomplished, well-spoken. And that just encourages my heart. It really, really does. Yes, it's nice to get your hair done. Yes, it's nice to put on a little bit of makeup. But really, what's on the inside? What is, what is as he said, um, where is your poise and your gravitas coming from? And that's a whole nother video, isn't it? But then I mentioned that there was another um, video that I wanted to share with you as I get ready to close. And that is... So this next video is from uh, Bill O'Reilly. I used to watch Bill O'Reilly a lot many years ago, and now he has his own... Uh, show and this is just a little clip from what Bill was talking about the other night. This has to do with fame and how fame is unnatural. So let's listen to Bill and again one of the reasons I like to listen to Mr. O'Reilly is again nonpartisan, conservative yes but nonpartisan. He'll give each side an opportunity to talk and then he, le he leaves it up for the viewer to decide but I love what he shared about fame. Fame is unnatural. Human beings cannot, cannot handle it. Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Michael Jackson, Princess Diana, Prince, John Belusi, Karen Carpenter, Legion. I could give you 50 more names. You get crushed. You get crushed. And I wish someone had shared that wisdom with me many, many years ago when I was young. But it's something that I guess we all have to learn for ourselves. And so those are the things that I wanted to share with you on my birthday today. I am so thankful to be 69 years old. I am so thankful for the things that I've learned, that I'm still going to learn. I'm so thankful that God has put people in my life, even though sometimes things might be hard to hear things that I have to do to look at my inward self, uh, things that I've learned to help my outward self. And I'm thankful for all of you. And I would love if you would write into the comments below anything, just anything that your hearts desire uh, to share with me on my birthday. 
So I have to land the plane. I have to go. Going out to dinner on my birthday. Don't have to cook it. Don't have to clean it. Love that. And I just want to thank you so much for spending time with me today, for spending time with me all these past three years. And as always, please remember to look for the silver linings because they're still there. God bless you, everybody. Bye-bye.